I'm very honored and pleased to be here to talk about the Hyperledger Foundation, um, which I have the honor of being the executive director uh, for. Um, for those of you who weren't on some of the panels, uh, many of the speakers today spoke about some of their Hyperledger-related technology use cases. Um, and it's been a great two days talking to many of you. Um, one of the things that I love about my job is that every single day I get to learn about new uh, customers or new uh, companies that are using Hyperledger tech and building uh, different use cases. We have a fantastic uh, lineup today. We're going to be hearing from Catherine Gu at Visa, Sofia Lopez at Kaleido, and Ken Nagumara at Hitachi, um, really understanding how we go about uh, building these things. So just as a reminder, this is a Hyperledger symposium meetup, and we are really, uh, it's really important for us that everyone feels welcomed. We're gonna have time for questions and networking at the end, and we want to make sure everybody has a voice, so please be respectful. We do have a code of conduct that we have all our meetings from. So let's talk a bit about what the Hyperledger Foundation is. The Hyperledger Foundation is an industry uh, consortium, so we're a blockchain, uh, open source blockchain consortium that is really focused on uh, enterprise business blockchain technologies. And if you think about where blockchain is being used and applied, it is really across the industry. We see use cases in the energy industry, in the insurance industry, obviously in financial services. And you'll hear about some of these use cases from our speakers today, but if you think about where, uh, what makes this unique is that we are cross-industry and really focused on building developer communities for these open source projects. Many of these projects are going to be critical and are critical already in, uh, in different use cases, and open source is really key to making sure that these technologies are enabled. So uh, the Hyperledger Foundation is part of the Linux Foundation. For those of you who don't know the Linux Foundation. For the last 20 years, we've been hosting some of the most important open source technology projects uh, around the world. Obviously, starting with the Linux kernel itself, which is how the Linux Foundation uh, started you know, over 20 years ago. Uh, today, some of uh, projects like cloud native computing, which is where Kubernetes sits, or automotive grade Linux. We actually also have like the Academy Software Foundation. If you like watching films, a lot of the film th uh, 3D rendering, film uh, making that comes from open source that is hosted at the Linux Foundation. And today we'll talk obviously about the code that is hosted at the Hyperledger Foundation. We are a neutral community, meaning anyone can participate. All our code is available as Apache license. You can download the code and you can use the code for whatever reason that you need to do so. And it's really important for us to make sure that anyone can participate as part of the foundation as we go through it. Today, our community since 2015 has really grown quite a bit. Um, we are a community of over 40,000 contributors. These are people that have contributed code or other types of content into the community over the last six, seven years uh, associated with uh, Hyperledger. Um, we have uh, hundreds, uh, over 300 different repositories. These are open source code bases and repositories that host our code and our developer community. And we are also hundreds of companies that support the foundation. These are companies that join the Hyperledger Foundation to help support of the, de uh, the developer communities, to help support the uh, governments and the associations that are building using Hyperledger technology. Uh, as I mentioned, we've been doing this since 2016. Um, I would say we're one of the oldest of the enterprise blockchain spaces, and we've really seen growth and um, community uh, as we go through it. Um, today, uh, we have things like our global meetup community, where we have over 80,000 people that participate in our meetups, um, our regional and our virtual meetups and events like we are meeting today. And it's really about growing that community and making sure that everybody has access to it. 
a brief history of Hyperledger. For those of you who visited our booth over here, you saw this timeline of where the Hyperledger Foundation and what we've been delivering to the marketplace. And as I mentioned, starting in 2015, we actually launched the Hyperledger project. At the time, it was called a project. It had one project that was contributed to in the beginning of 2016, which was Hyperledger Fabric. It was a major contribution by IBM, as well as Digital Asset. And today, Hyperledger Fabric continues to be one of the most adopted permission distributed ledger frameworks in the marketplace. They're already on version three. They have two LTS releases, which are long-term support releases. And it's really important when you think about enterprise-grade software, where enterprises are using this code into their own products and services, that things like the project lifecycle and how the, pro the product projects themselves get to market. And that is something that the Hyperledger Foundation really focuses on. So in 2015, 2016, we had Hyperledger Fabric, Hyperledger Sawtooth, which was a contribution by Intel, um, Hyperledger Explorer, which was a community contribution, and then Hyperledger Eroha, which was a contribution by a company in Japan called Seramitsu. Um, all these, at this point, were permission distributed ledgers, and the enterprise wanted and needed a very specific use case for distributed ledgers. Oops, and I don't know how to click. There you go. In 2017, the foundation started to expand a bit beyond the traditional distributed ledger blockchain, and we actually brought in uh, Hyperledger Indy, which was a purposely built framework for digital identity. Um, Cello uh, was a, an operating for a community-driven uh, project as well, and Quilt started addressing the needs for interoperability. So very early on, we knew that it was going to be a network of networks and interoperability between platforms was going to be important. I'll hit upon that in a little bit of a second. The other thing that happened in 2017 is we actually welcomed the first EVM or Ethereum virtual machine project into the foundation. And Hyperledger Burrow had an EVM. It was built on Tendermint. It has since been end of life, but the EVM component itself is still active. And it was really a nod to where we were seeing the Ethereum ecosystem from a market perspective, and that there was interest in the EVM and a lot of the community building there. And we'll talk more about that in a second. As we proceed, the enterprise changes continue to grow, and Caliper and Ursa came in in 2018, addressing, for example, Ursa from a cryptographic library perspective. And we started launching and bringing in code projects that were not just DLTs, but there were also tools and libraries to help enterprises actually do the deployment of these tools within their enterprises. 2019 was another year where we saw some firsts, and we saw uh, Hyperledger Ares, which actually came from Indy, and this is also in the digital identity space, um, and became its own project. Um, Grid, which was a project specific to supply chain domain, so building applications on the supply chain, um, and Transact and Avalon, once again, tools and libraries enabling the deployment of these tools within enterprise use cases. And in 2019, we also welcome a very important project, Hyperledger Besu, and Hyperledger Besu was a contribution to the Hyperledger Foundation by a company called Consensus with a Y. And Hyperledger Besu today um, can be run as an Ethereum mainnet execution client, and for those of you familiar with the Ethereum mainnet, you um, have Consensus clients and execution clients, and Besu can be run as a mainnet client, um, and client um, uh, diversity is extremely important to the Ethereum ecosystem. And today, Beisu is typically number either three or four in uh, usage uh, for the um, execution client. The unique thing about Beisu is that you can also run it as a permission DLT. So you have all the properties of the Ethereum virtual machine, and you can run it um, as a permission DLT. And some of our speakers will be talking about uh, Beisu as well. So we're very um, happy to have our speakers today. In 2019, we also started aggressively bringing in projects into our Hyperledger labs. And for those of you who are developers or working for companies that might have interesting code projects that are blockchain and identity related and want to contribute to the Hyperledger Foundation, please do talk to us. We're always looking for code projects to come in to basically help people get onboarded with blockchain projects as we go along.
In 2020, I mentioned quilt in interoperability back in 2017. In 2020, we actually started a project within the community called Cactus that was addressing interoperability. So by interoperability, if you think about this networks of networks and you're talking about perhaps a Hyperledger fabric implementation that needs to work with an R3 Corda implementation or a fabric implementation that needs to work with a Quorum implementation, how do you go about doing that? And Hyperledger Cactus and today it's actually called Cacti because we brought in a, 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 a lab called Weaver into the Cacti project, is addressing real need enterprise use cases for interoperability. And that community continues to grow. We have contributions from Fujitsu and Accenture and IBM. We have some major contributions coming from a very large company over the next few months. And it's really because, once again, the enterprise is building these, these networks across multiple multiple DLTs, and everybody knows who here has either is part of an enterprise or is sold to the enterprise or delivers solutions to enterprise space companies. Okay, so you know that optionality is really key. So a lot of the tools that you're seeing coming out of the Hyperledger Foundation allows enterprises and the technical vendors and that they partner with to select what is the best DLT for their use cases. What are the best tools and libraries that meet their objectives and their goals as well. In uh, 2021, um, I actually took over as executive director in the fall of 2021. I had been with the project since 2017, but I took over as executive director. And what we had been seeing over the last 12 months before was that there was a change in how the enterprise was addressing these use cases. And we, as we saw, there was not just one project or a few projects that were really driving the Hyperledger project in our community and our members worldwide. So we actually rebranded to Hyperledger Foundation, so we're an umbrella of projects, and all our projects are under our umbrella. But very importantly, it's about acknowledging that the market has changed and matured, and that we're not just one thing as the monolithic enterprise blockchain tool. Um, and you'll see more projects is coming around. In 2021, we also uh, welcomed a very important project, Firefly, and we'll have Sofia Lopez today do a presentation around Firefly. And once again, it's about enabling enterprises to very quickly get up to speed and deploy these blockchain networks and really bring community together. And Sophia's got some great use cases that she's going to talk about today. And Hyperledger Bevel is another project that came in from the community um, that really is about deploying these tools in the marketplace. How do you make it easy? How do you make sure that it's not a multi-month, multi-year process to do that? So, in 2022, we had two other projects come in. Uh, one was Hyperledger Solang, which actually is a Solidity compiler. Um, and many people are like, why is there a Solidity compiler in Hyperledger? But if you've been paying attention, if you come down to our booth, you understand that today's enterprises are really diverse in which communities they want to do. So we are addressing things like connections into Avalanche and Polygon with Firefly. Um, and uh, Solang is also a, a compiler for Substrate, which is the Polkadot ecosystem. And then Anand Creds uh, also came from Hyperledger Indies, and it's a verifiable credentials uh, project. Uh, once again, very important from a digital identity and blockchain space. And uh, you can come over to the booth and speak to us as well. We have a lot of resources for our communities to get involved. We are an open community. Anyone in this room can participate, whether you're technical or your business, whether you're a subject matter expert in one of our uh, industries in telecom, in supply chain, and trade finance. These are just some examples. Uh, we're doing a lot of great work, our community, around climate action and accounting, um, where we're looking for companies that are building solutions and developers and subject matter experts. It's not just about the technology. A lot of these projects, as you think about it, you have to understand the economics of the industry. You have to understand the regulation that each industry has. And we're always looking for SMEs who can help us build these stories and use cases as well. Once again, everything is open. You can always jump in. Uh, many of these climate, uh, many of these special interest groups have um, open meetings. Uh, distribute. Uh, they have uh, email lists you can participate in, um, as well as Discord. We have a very active Discord as well. 
Um, you're here today at the Hyperledger Symposium. If you are local to the Bay Area, we have meetups um, in Silicon Valley as well as in San Francisco, as well as worldwide. We have 80,000 participants in our meetup community that anyone can participate in worldwide. If you're traveling someplace, uh, most likely you'll have a meetup there. Um, and we do a lot of workshops and training. If you're interested in learning about blockchain. We have a blockchain 101 course, if it's new to you. Um, over 270,000 people have taken this course over the last six years. That really educate both business and technical leaders, and we update that course every so often um, around uh, blockchain. We also have courses that are really focused on specific projects. So if you're interested in Hyperledger Bezu or in one of the Indie or Aries uh, project code bases, you can, as a developer, you can get up to speed on it. Uh, we also launched a very important uh, course last year for self-sovereign identity or decentralized identity, depending on who you're talking to. This is a self-paced free edX course to get you up to speed around digital identity credentialing and why it's so important uh, for us in the marketplace. Um, our workshops um, are usually three, four hour workshops. You can jump on. Um, at the end of the workshop, you can build, for example, an NFT platform using Firefly, or you can understand how how to build a central bank digital currency using Hyperledger Fabric or some of the others. So our workshops are really a great way to uh, understand. Um, if you haven't visited our booth, you can also, and you can scan this, um, we have our, on our website over 150 use cases, really across all industry use cases, um, big companies, small companies. If you have built something with Hyperledger and you're not in our uh, use case library, please submit it and let us know that it's there. Uh, we're always happy to help promote some of the work that our community has done. As I mentioned when I started, one of my most favorite things is to walk up, people walk up to me at a booth. Um, I've even had this happen at airports where I'm like, I have a Hyperledger shirt and someone comes up to me and says, hey, do you know Hyperledger? Do you use Hyperledger? And I have to explain to them, well, I'm the executive director and they say, hey, I've built this thing using Hyperledger and this is awesome. And I, seriously, this is my but the best part of my job. But you go ahead and scan that and you can see over 150 use cases. And we have longer form use cases on our website as well. We actually just launched a, a case study with Kaleido around Firefly uh, just this week, actually. Um, if you go over to the booth, we had some printouts and you can scan to get access to that Kaleido case study as well. And I think I have one more. And as I mentioned, you know, the ecosystem continues to change the distributed ledger ecosystem. Uh, we also just launched our Hyperledger DLT landscape that highlights not just Hyperledger projects, but other projects that are in the blockchain space um, that are addressing enterprise needs. So please do take a look at that. And once again, if you have products or services that you offer in the blockchain space and you'd like to be included in our DLT, um, if you use Hyperledger, great. But if you don't, please submit your uh, use cases as well. We're here as a resource for the enterprise community more than anything else as well. And uh, as a reminder, we're a very active community. I'm, I'm a newbie when it comes to Discord, um, but please uh, check our new Discord out if you're interested in the specific project channels, um, in the specific special interest groups. You'll find somebody to chat there and get some information from as well. All right. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our next speaker. Um, and actually, she has a different deck. If you guys can pull that up, that would be great. Um, Sofia Lopez is the president and founder, co-founder of Kaleido. I've had the privilege of knowing Sofia for many, many years, even prior to her move over to Kaleido. Um, she also currently sits on our Hyperledger Foundation governing board as one of the general member representatives. So every year, our general members elect two individuals uh, to represent them. And Sofia uh, won the election this year and has been really a great uh, uh, advocate for the blockchain space uh, since uh, we've all were very young, right, Sophia? <laughs> yeah, we're still 